Alrighty everyone, so we're back today and today we will be taking a look at Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye and I am really excited to take a look at this. And guys, I know I am late to this video and I'm sorry for that. I've just been incredibly busy with life and then my laptop was broken and I had to give that to the repair shop and it, it was just, oh, it's been a long time. But hey, I'm ready. Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye is out and I am really excited to see what is new, what has changed since I've been waiting th for this for quite some time. So let's dive right into there. But first, today's sponsor, Ibisoft. Have you ever needed to recover data from a hard drive, USB stick, SD card, or really any USB device, but it just seemed too hard? Well, Ibisoft is here for that. Ibisoft is a piece of software that will help you recover all of your data from your USB device. So to install it on your system, first head over to ibisoft.com, then click Windows Data Recovery. If you are on a Mac, this is also available if you click that Mac button. Download the one for your Windows machine if you're on Windows and click that button right there and install it onto your system. And then follow the prompts and recover your data from your USB device. So click that link in the description to go to their website and to purchase the software. Now, back to the video. So, first of all, I want to talk about the free upgrade that many of us have got when we updated to the new version of Raspberry Pi OS. And if you don't understand what I mean, with Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, some people, if they have this special little part on their Raspberry Pi, will automatically be clocked at 1.8 gigahertz instead of the normal default 1.5 gigahertz. So you might say, hey, that's not really upgrade. They basically just overclocked my Raspberry Pi. And yeah, you could say, so basically for the people that have this special little, little thing, I will show a picture of this. Those people get a free 1.8 gigahertz on their Raspberry Pi by default when they use Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. And the other people who don't have that well, sadly they will still be on 1.5 gigahertz, but hey, it's not that hard to overclock. So you could just go sudo nano dash boot dash config.txt and right from here you could go ahead and overclock your raspberry pi i will leave the commands for that in the description but basically they went ahead and overclocked your raspberry pi 4 if you have this special pi 4 which i think is pretty cool and i'm i i mean i just won the lottery i mean i was not expecting to have it but thankfully i have an 8 gigabyte pi and it was there by default i'm happy no complaints so yeah all right, so now that we talked about that free upgrade, that's just probably one of the bigger things that's made the headlines on this new version of Raspberry Pi OS. But let's get to the next part, and that is, let's talk about the appearance. Has there been any appearance changes in Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye over like the older Raspberry Pi OS Buster? Well, for the most part, I mean, I can, I just say no. Like, this is the default wallpaper that comes on Bullseye, but this was a wallpaper available on Buster as well. They just basically changed it. All the same wallpapers are here. They didn't add anything new there, which honestly is kind of a bummer for me since I'm someone who really loves a, a good wallpaper. In the top bar right here, we have time, wa um, audio, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then I'll talk about that in a minute. We have terminal, files, web browser, and our Raspberry Pi logo. So. I mean, nothing really changed here. We have all our, all the default apps that came on Buster are still all here, which for me is a bit of a bummer since I was hoping for a little bit more of an update design since sure the theming is nice on Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, but it, it's, it's not the most modern looking. It kind of looks like a child's operating system. Wait, wait, don't get me guys. I'm not complaining. I'm just like, I wish there was a bit more of a change, but it's still good. It's really easy to change yourself, and that's what matters, I guess. But yeah, so let's head over and take a look at some system resource usage. So if we open up our Raspberry Pi tab right here, and whoa, whoa, I'm sorry, guys. Before we do that, let's talk about the new changes that they made in the appearance settings. So now Raspberry Pi West uses GTK Plus 3 instead of GTK Plus 2. I mean, they support both, but it's just a much more modern version that for, say, like GNOME uses and other operating systems. So more apps will be compatible. I mean, They'll, they'll just look better on the system, which is really cool. And before, they actually used OpenBox as their window manager. They used it OpenBox, which is an okay window manager. It's pretty lightweight, which is cool, but 
with this version, now they're using something called Mutter. And Mutter, we type that in, does anything happen? Oh, it, okay, it's already up there, but Mutter is basically, it's a different type of window manager. It's other than Openbox, and with it, we actually have some pretty cool effects that come. So just watch this. Let's say I click on the Raspberry Pi logo right here. Okay, nothing happened, but if I open up the file manager, just the effect of it opening up is a little bit nicer. It's a little bit nicer to the eye. You can kind of see that effect. It's cool to see some more effects coming to Raspberry Pi OS. And yeah, so that's just basically the change that I've noticed so far with Mutter. I did read that it's a little bit heavier than Openbox, but for me, since I do own an 8GB Pi, it's not that big of an issue. But that that's what I've noticed so far. And now, let's talk about the system resource usage on Bullseye. Is it heavier than Raspberry Pi OS Buster? Well, if we type in HTOC right here, we can see that my cores are down and my memory usage is at 227 megabytes. So let me just say this. I'm pretty sure that I used to get around 100 megabytes of RAM usage on Buster. So it is a bit higher, like they said, probably because of Mutter. And for me, with a Raspberry Pi 4, I welcome this change. It's good for me. But I do see the side of someone like owning a Raspberry Pi 2W with only 512 megabytes of RAM. Right here, that's half of your RAM usage just going to the system. You're really not going to have much more RAM to use. So I can see both sides. Honestly, I kind of had this idea like it would be cool if the Raspberry Pi Foundation made a little bit of a heavier version that looks better for the Raspberry Pi 4 and then maybe go make a really light version for their low-end devices like the Raspberry Pi 2W. Just an idea but I feel like that could really it could just it would work well in my opinion but hey just my opinion. So that seems good right there. HTOP is all nice in here so if we just control escape didn't mean to do that. Oops, I'm not getting out of here. All right, we'll just close that up. And one more time, let's look at Neo Fetch. So right here, Neo. Oh man, I keep on messing up. Here we go. So we are running Raspberry and GNU Linux 11 Bullseye. We're we're on the kernel 5.10 on this version. We're on LXD. The theme and icons are good, and I am running at 1.8 gigahertz, like I said. So all welcome changes there. I'm happy. Alright, so now let's just go in and I will talk about some more of the upgrades. So one of the upgrades was that they added an upgrade manager in here that now you don't have to go into the terminal and go through that tedious process of typing in sudo apt update and then sudo apt upgrade. There is a tool right now that will do it all for you from this little application, which I think is pretty cool. So I actually do have some updates right here. Let's go ahead and click install and let's see what it does. I've never seen this work my first time too but it basically is a front end for the terminal for you so you it doesn't really say how fast or how much is downloading which is a little bit of a bummer and look I try to move this away from the middle it's not moving so it would be a little bit nice if you could if it was like a window and it gave a little bit more information about how much you're downloading how fast and then what it's going to install because those things are usually things i want to know when i'm trying to update my system but i mean it, it's not the biggest issue it's okay another thing that they did update we'll just talk, go on right now with this is they updated the notification manager so basically it's just going to look a little bit different so if i plug in something right here so I plugged in a little SD card reader right here. If I pull this out, you can see right here, it says drive was removed without ejecting. So it looks pretty similar. We just have these nice rounded edges, which I'm welcome to. I really like the way they look. It, it, it looks pretty simple, but it's still cool to see that we have a new update manager. That's also really nice. So we talked about the updater manager and oh they updated the, the updated the video driver to KMS. So KMS is a more widely used driver in the Linux community and it's cool that Raspberry Pi OS is now using it by default. It should just make your whole experience a little bit better. There is a new camera driver available too if you use a camera with your Raspberry Pi. And then there is some updates to the bookshelf. So if we went over to bookshelf, I think just froze real fast. All right, there we go, we're out of that little freezing. That's a little bit strange. If we went to accessories and where's our bookshelf? 
is it in help yeah it's in help my bad i've never used it before so we have bookshelf and so apparently they just added some new magazines if you're someone who uses these i mean you'll be happy you can go ahead and read through these things and yeah so i'll just let this update finish on and then we'll go back and we'll take a look at is how much chromium actually changed all right guys so the update is done and it just said everything is okay before i could hit that little okay button it closed up it's fine with me so we have an upgraded system now now i want to head over to chromium because apparently we have some nice welcoming changes in chromium on this new version of raspberry pi os so first of all apparently chromium is updated to version i think it was 92 so let's go over to settings Let's check that out real fast. So if we go to about Chromium, we are on version 92. So let's look up real fast. What is the latest build of Chromium? Because, sorry guys, I'm not up to date with this. But the uh, latest build is 95, I guess. So the, we're on 92. It's, it's obvious for a Debian-based system to have an older version of Chromium. All right, but yeah, so apparently we, we have some better video acceleration inside of this Chromium. We'll test it out. We'll see if video plays back better. But first, let's just look at some web browsing. I know Raspberry Pi should be able to hand, handle this no issue, but I still like to test this out on all of my operating systems just to get a good idea of how they feel. So we'll do one more. We'll type in 55400. So you can see when I'm trying to open up many tabs, there is a little bit of a lag. But overall, this thing is incredibly responsive. All of them open up. I mean, it's scrollable, and I'm happy. The performance seems it seems good actually. So, looking good. Web browsing is definitely usable. It's I guess it's the same as the older version of Raspberry Pi OS. I honestly haven't seen any difference. But if we went over to youtube.com and then let's take a look at some big buck bunny and see our classic but i will go with 1080p this time to see if it's worth it Alrighty, guys so here we got the video playing and i'm playing this 1080p 60 fps video so it's pretty it, we're pushing in a lot it's a high video so right now we are dropping 474 out of 997 so and it, it, it's not watchable I mean yeah but that is probably because of the 60 frames when it goes to 60 frames it's just hard it probably could do 1080p but let's start out with just some 720p 30 fps big bug bunny and this should be a lot better or this is 24 fps even <laughs> so we'll skip to the middle and you can see it's gonna bust through this anyway two drop frames at 227 so if you're okay with watching videos at 720p on your raspberry pi os the raspberry pi 4 is gonna buzz through it on this operating system it can totally do it yeah it, do it doesn't look too much like screen tearing i can make it bigger it, it doesn't go into that big mode too gracefully but it does do it so hey I mean, it's alright video playback, not a huge drastic change over the last build in my experience, but overall, it's pretty good. Alright, so to conclude this video, well, before we conclude this video, I wanted to talk about a few bugs that I've actually noticed. So first of all, maybe this could be because I am using a capture card, but if I go over to preferences and I go to screen configuration, and then I go over to configure screens. This is how you change resolution. I go to resolution. I'm, I see right now I'm set at 1920 by 1080, but obviously my screen isn't 1080p right now because it's 720p. And if I went, I did Neo Fetch. You can see right here it says my screen is going to be located at 720p right now. So. And once you set it, actually ask you to do a full system reboot, which it's again, see it says screen layout updated change will take effect after reboot. Do you want to up reboot right now? No. I don't know why it's working. Maybe it is because of that capture card, but yeah, it's that's a bit of a bummer. Overall, yeah. So my thoughts on Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, I like it. There are definitely some under the hood changes. I do like that I'm getting that free CPU uh, overclock by default it's a really nice touch but 
I really do wish that there had been some more visual change. Maybe it's me, but when I use a computer, that part of how it looks is it's kind of important to me because it's one of my hobbies to go go through Theme Linux and have a really beautiful looking desktop. And I really appreciate it when it's by default. I mean, that's just my little, that, that's what I would like. Maybe you guys like the appearance. Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I'm just rambling around guys. But hey, so Raspberry Pi, has, Raspberry Pi was bullseye. I welcome the changes. So far, so good. And I would recommend you guys it. I mean, yeah, I would. So, thanks for watching. If there's anything I can improve, let me know in the comments below. Any any other operating system, any other product, anything you would like me to make a video on, also let me know in the comments below. If you like to give it a like. If you didn't give it that dislike, we won't be able to see how many. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.